Hello everybody, this is John Brewer. I'm coming to you now because uh, last week we had Space Engineers 1.046 release. And in that release, the devs added a very interesting new block called the Sensor Block. Now the Sensor Block opens up all kinds of interesting possibilities for Space Engineers, but one of the ones that's been getting a lot of uh, interesting coverage lately are the sensor drones, or the tracking drones, or the smart mines, or whatever you'd like to call them. These are basically devices that follow players or ships around the map uh, and can be smart enough to track them. I haven't found any really good tutorials online about how to build these devices, so I figured I'd make one. Now, the first thing that I want to do is do a quick review of exactly how the sensor block works. I'm going to drop a sensor block there, I'm going to drop a light next to it. Now, when you open up the sensor block in the terminal, you'll note that it has two major areas on its custom setup here. It has the extents. Now these extents define a cube around the sensor block. Uh, how far to the left, to the right, above, below, in front and in back of the sensor block, it can detect objects. And then it has checkboxes that tell you what types of objects will trigger its action. So if it finds a player in that box, it'll activate. Uh, if it finds floating objects like tools and debris, if it finds small ships, large ships, stations, uh, whatnot, it will trigger. When it triggers, we can set up two different actions for it to undertake. Now, the first action happens when it detects something, when, it, when an object that it is intended to detect is inside that cube that the extents define. So I'm going to tell this block, turn on a light when you see something in your uh, detection space, specifically when you see a player. And then when you don't see a player anymore, turn that light block off. So now what it should do is, when I am standing within about five meters of the sensor block, that light that I just placed should come on. When I leave that area, the light should go off. So here I am, I'm standing inside the sensor area, the light is on, I back off, you can see the sensor turns blue when it can't see anything anymore, and the light goes off. I go back into the zone, sensor turns green, light turns on, sensor can see me, light turns on. I leave, I go back in, I leave, I go back in. I can do this all day, but I think that you get the idea. Sensor finds an object inside its search zone, it takes the action that we tell it to do. When that object leaves, it stops taking that action, or takes whatever action we tell it to uh, do when it no longer sees that object. So I'm going to delete these. And now, we're going to actually build ourselves a tracking drone. So I'm going to build a new small ship. Uh, and actually, I'm going to move a fair ways off the platform here, because uh, I've actually had some performance issues with these when I'm very close to a station. I'm not sure exactly what the cause is, but I'd rather not have performance issues on my video. Okay, so this is just going to be a very straightforward uh, small ship. We're gonna remember that this, you know, if I'm going to define symmetry, I should actually use it. Okay, so this block goes forward. Uh, we're going to add two reactors because sensors actually draw a surprising amount of power. And we're going to add five gyroscopes. Now, the gyroscopes are the things that are actually going to provide the control authority to the sensors to steer the ship. Now, once we have those gyros on there, we're going to add the sensors themselves. We're going to add a dorsal sensor. That's the up sensor. We're going to add a ventral sensor, the down sensor. And we're going to add the port and starboard sensors, which are left and right, respectively. Now, there are a couple of things that we need to do here. The first of which is 
that we need to configure the gyroscopes. So we're going to the terminal. Now these gyroscopes we're going to be overriding and the exact way that we're going to override them is one is going to yaw us to the left, or yaw star, uh, yaw port rather. Hey, let's not use my caps lock incorrectly there. One of them is going to yaw us to starboard. One of them is going to pitch us up. And one of them is going to pitch us down. Now, the most complicated thing about actually setting up one of these drones, and I haven't found a really, really great way of overcoming it yet, is calibrating the gyroscopes. Now, I'm just going to name these sensors while I still remember which is which. But because of the way that Space Engineers treats the uh, yaw, pitch, and roll of the gyroscopes, they seem to be dependent on the exact orientation of the gyroscopes sitting on the ship. I can never remember which way is which, so I basically have to walk through the uh, orientation process each time. So the way that I do this is I make sure that I can see the ship in the background here. Now, yaw port needs to turn the ship to the left when we activate it. So I'm going to move this slider here and I can see the ship turning in the background, but that was turning to starboard. So if I turn it this way, I can see it turning to port in the background. That's exactly what I want to do. I'm going to lock that in and turn off the block. Now, to yaw starboard, I want to go the other way. And in this case, actually just dragging yaw all the way over the other direction works great. I need to pitch up. Now, one of the interesting things I've found about uh, Space Engineer's gyroscopes is that when I actually use the pitch control here, um, actually, is it doing it? Yes, it's actually doing it correctly. A lot of times I uh, am using the pitch control and it actually rolls the ship, it doesn't pitch it. So uh, maybe I was screwing something up there, but. Uh, in any event, I need to pitch up. It looks like going all the way over here will pitch the ship up. Uh, so that's great. For pitch down. Ah, oh, this is beautiful. This is one of the simplest ones that I've built so far. I'm glad. You want your demonstration models to be simple. And then I have the braking gyro. The braking gyro is just the thing that when all the other gyros are turned off, causes the ship to point in whatever direction it happens to be pointing and doesn't just retain rotational inertia or angular momentum if you prefer. Okay, so for each of the sensors, basically what we want the ship to do, I'm going to actually put these in, in a group, is to turn in whatever direction the sensor sees something. So for the dorsal sensor, When we some, see something above us, we want to pitch up. That will move our nose towards it. Uh, when we don't see anything above us, we don't want to pitch up. It's a pretty simple algorithm. For the ventral sensor, or the down direction, we want to do exactly the same thing. When we see something below us, we want to pitch towards it. When we don't, we uh, don't. When we see something to port, we ought to port. When we see something to starboard, we yaw to starboard. And uh, that's about all that there is to just getting the drone to point toward you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the sensor head here. Oh, there's one more thing that I need to do. I need to adjust the extents. Now, sensors only work out to 50 meters in Space Engineers. Uh, 50 meters is not very far. 
so I try to put it out to uh, the maximum amount, except for the back extent. The back extent is how far the dorsal sensor can see below itself and how far the ventral sensor can see above itself. Um, I really don't want them to have any back view at all, uh, because that will just confuse the algorithm. So what we do is we crank the uh, back extent to one meter, everybody else out to 50, and now you can see the drone can see me, it's following me, it's constantly pointing towards me, it loves me. Now one of the other things that uh, a lot of people have had an interesting time doing is actually getting the uh, drones to follow them around. So let me turn off the sensor head real quick while I do a quick refit to this device. In order to get the drone to follow me, I need to actually give it engines. Um, gyros are great, but they don't actually produce a whole lot in the way of linear force. I'm just going to make a really ugly engine set here. Um, and because I'm going to trust that you are finding the interesting part of this video to be the tracking being performed by the drone and not my aesthetic abilities. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put a sensor on the nose and we are going to call it nose sensor because we are very creative people. Uh, and if I can type, I'll be doing even better. Now what the nose sensor wants to do is it wants to look way out in front of us. And I'm actually going to add it to the sen oh, oops, uh, yeah. let's take all the gyros out of the sensor head group because I am bad at my job. Okay, now we've got the no sensor added to the sensor head group, and what we're going to do with it is we're going to take those two thrusters in back, the forward thrust group here. And we're basically going to do the same thing with them that we've been doing with the gyroscopes, which is we're going to set them to a very high-powered override, and we're going to turn them off. And what we're going to do is we're going to have the nose sensor turn those engines on when it is triggered. And remember, it gets triggered when it sees me uh, in you know this 5x5 five five meter column in front of it out to 50 meters. And so I'm going to turn on the sensor heads again. And what will happen is, whoa, there we go. We have this drone. It's out there. And it should be seeing me. Yep, it can. So when I get in front of it, it turns, it sees me. It comes around, it sees me again, it comes back. I actually think that maybe uh, I shouldn't have given it so much power. I think that it might be uh, in real danger of moving out of its own sensor range when it goes charging past me. But such is life. Now, obviously, you could apply this sort of technology to all sorts of things. Uh, missiles and torpedoes are sort of the most obvious application to just put a homing warhead or to put a homing block on a bunch of warheads, and you j basically attach the warheads to the front of this drone here, and just have it slam into uh, whatever your target was. But there are other applications, such as uh, following mining ships around, following players around. Uh, if you're a little clever about it, you can get them to, you can set up multiple front-facing sensors so that the ship breaks uh, when it approaches within a certain distance of you. Uh, there are all sorts of very interesting things you can do with this sensor technology. And I'm sure that as the technology improves and as people have more time to play with it, we're going to see all kinds of very remarkable things happening. But for now, I think that that'll conclude my basic tutorial on how to build these sensor drones. I hope that you've had a lot of fun with it. I know that I'm certainly looking forward to seeing what comes out of the community with these uh, very interesting blocks. Until uh, my next video, though, I'm John Brewer. Come and learn from my mistakes.